Hello everyone, our lesson for today is about biomolecules and their properties. Biomolecules are essential components of our cells. This lesson will tackle the four classes of biological molecules, specifically their different types, structures, and functions will be discussed. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to identify the biological molecules that make up the cell and describe the functions of each biological molecule. So here's the, the motivation question for you. Have you wondered what is the source of your energy? What makes up your hair and nails? Or why do you look like your parents? I hope you'll be able to answer that one. Now as no, we end our discussion later. So what are biological macromolecules? So biological macromolecules are actually large molecules that are one of, uh, that are essential you know, in for the survival of every living organisms. What are the four major classes of macromolecules that make up the cells? So the four classes of macromolecules are carbohydrates, the lipids, the proteins, and the nucleic acids. Now each of them has different chemical structures and function. So in general, you know, for carbohydrates, the polymers you know, or the big molecule of a carbohydrate as an example are the starch which is which are the, these polymers are made up of monomers or thus the structural units of every polymer and the monomer so a starch the monomer of starch is monosaccharide and each of these monomers are held together you know, by a covalent covalent bond you know, so that the polymer you know, is stable so the covalent bond is like a glue you know, that sticks the monomers together to form these bigger molecules called the polymers so a starch is an example of a carbohydrate polymer you have here dna is an example of a nucleic acid polymer this polypeptide you no know, is a protein polymer and this triglyceride you no know, is a lipid polymer now starch is made up of different monosaccharides as the monomer you have here the dna is made up of the nucleoside nucle nucleic acids are made up of nucleotides uh, polypeptides are made up of amino acids and the triglycerides are made up of uh, fatty acids you know, and glycerol now the covalent bond the one that sticks together or the one that is like a glue you know that pastes together the different monomers to form the polymers for carbohydrates it's what we call the glycosidic bond for phosphodiester but for nucleic acids is what we call phosphodiester bond for proteins are peptide bond and ester linkage for lipids <coughs> Now let us discuss you know, each of them one by one. Let us start with carbohydrates. So carbohydrates are made up of monomers called simple sugars or the monosaccharides which are held by a covalent bond again called the glycosidic bond to form the polymer. So why are they important? Carbohydrates serve as source of energy to fuel cellular process in your physiology you will be talking about or in your biochemistry you will be talking about Krebs cycle or glucose metabolism no so that is the end product of or, or the sugar that is sticking up in the body is metabolized to yield energy in the form of ATP now carbohydrates also function as energy storage and in some cell types they provide the primary material for some structures now carbohydrates are of different subtypes 
And these sometimes differ in the number of simple sugars that comprise them. So for example, monosaccharide. It is composed only of one simple sugar. So examples are glucose, fructose, and galactose. The isaccharides are those that are made up of two simple sugars. Examples are the sucrose, maltose, and lactose. Polysaccharides are those composed of multiple monosaccharides. Example are the glycogen, starch, chitin, and cellulose. Cellulose is the, is the principal component of plant cell wall. Chitin are found in the exoskeleton of some arthropods and are also found in the cell wall of fungi. Starch is a storage product in plants and glycogen. The storage is the storage form of carbohydrate in animals. Lipids, on the other hand, are mostly composed of fatty acids and glycerol, which are held by the covalent bond ester linkage. Now, do we really need lipids in our bodies? Yes, of course, no, we need lipids in our bodies. They are important because they store twice as much energy as carbohydrates and provide protection and cautioning of body organs. So some types are structural components of membrane, not like the phospholipids, while others serve as chemical messengers, not like hormones. So there are four main groups of lipids. Example, the first one is the, trigly the triglycerides, you know, like oils and fats, are composed of three fatty acid bonded to glycerol. And this is also the main component of uh, some oils and fats. Waxes, you know, are like those found in plant cuticles, are composed of variable numbers of fatty acids bonded to long chain alcohol phospholipids like phosphatidylcholine are composed of a polar phosphate group and two fatty acids so that is that are bonded via glycerol steroids on the other hand like cholesterol are composed of four fused rings of carbon atoms with functional groups attached the third type are the nucleic acids. Now they are made up of nucleotides that are held by phosphodiester band. They are important for the storage, transmission, and usage of genetic information. Now general information about nucleic acids has already been discussed in your genetics course. And topics about gene expression and regulation will be discussed further in Unit 6 of these course so we will be talking about gene expression transcription and translation when we go to module six okay the last uh, biological macromolecule are the proteins now they are made up of the monomer called amino acids and are covalently linked by a peptide bond now what are they used as types of structures of proteins Proteins are used by living organisms for defense, transport, or structure, motion, regulation, storage, and enzyme catalysis. No, so as for example, defense mechanism like our antibodies you no know, are made up of protein. The the venom of some snakes, these are made up of protein. For transport, hemoglobin is a protein that transports oxygen throughout our body structure you no know, like our nails our uh hairs and the collagen in our skin you know, these are proteins for motion you no know, the actin in our muscles regulation so some hormones are peptide hormones you no know, are proteins that regulate some physiological process in our body for storage now there are proteins like casein in milk you now that is for storage of proteins you now by animals and enzyme catalysis so enzymes are biological catalysts and we will be talking about this after this uh protein topics of proteins now amino acids as the uh, building block of proteins have a centrally located carbon with four groups that are bonded to it so they all have 
hydrogen carboxyl amino and an argon as a sa or the side chain so hydroxyl amino and carboxyl and and R group so all of the amino acids found in our in li ever living organisms are you know, made up of the same types of uh, amino acids and these different amino acids differ only on their R chain or their side chain so what are the different structures of proteins so proteins exist in four levels of structure so these are the primary secondary tertiary and quaternary structure so how do they differ from each other the primary structure is the simplest the level of protein structure so af upon the translation of messenger rna during after transcription so the what's formed it's actually the protein primary structure this primary structure will uh, undergo protein folding to form the secondary structure they could be alpha helix or beta plated sheets and these they will aggregate to form tertiary protein structure also in one in one chain so there may be those that will form alpha helices there are maybe those that will form uh, beta sheets so it, it depends on the sequence of amino acid present now this tertiary structure will now aggregate you know, if they are uh, heteromeric types of proteins they will form quaternary protein structures now lastly enzymes now, enzymes are proteins and we know that proteins could function for enzyme catalysis enzymes are regarded as biological catalysts but what is a catalyst a catalyst are substances that speed up the rate of a chemical reaction and they help biological processes become faster by lowering the activation energy okay so the, the enzyme whenever a system or a, a chemical reaction is present in our body now we don't know when a particular chemical reaction will happen so the the, the function the role of an enzyme is to help in the reaction so that it will the fast the reaction will become faster say for example if you want to break down maltose to produce glucose and glucose so you have to break down we know that it is possible to break down a maltose but when when will it happen when will it be finished so an enzyme maltase is the one you know, that helps in the reaction in order to break down the reactants not the maltose to form the products okay so what how does the enzyme do that the enzyme uh will speed up the rate of a chemical reaction by lowering the activation energy so okay, as you can see in this graph you have here the energy no that is needed or the end the, the energy the energy plot for a chemical reaction without uh, the participation of an enzyme and with the participation of an enzyme so we know that in the particular reaction this this gap here uh, this gap here the distance between the the maximum energy level and getting the lowest is what we call the activation energy so without an enzyme the activation energy is very high so this activation energy must be supplied in order for you to break down or synthesize a product to for, or a, a reactant to form the product meaning you have to invest a lot of energy in order for the reaction to occur but with but with an enzyme the activation energy is lowered because it is the enzyme that actually provides the energy for the reaction and so if you notice the activation energy is lowered in an enzymatic reaction okay so that is the per that's the function of the enzyme they speed up the rate of the reaction okay by lowering the activation energy now although the enzyme is in are involved in the reaction they are not consumed in the reaction and they are not part of the product so they just help in the reaction they are not part of the reactants so they are not consumed in the reaction 
and most importantly they're also not part of the products now enzymes catalyze all aspects of cellular metabolism including energy generation and storage as well as gene expression so all of our uh, chemical reaction in our body are enzyme linked that is because so for example you want to get energy from the food that you have eaten we know that that is possible but when will that happen with the use of the enzyme it will be easier as to convert the food you no know, into a usable form of energy like atp so the reactant to whom you know, the enzyme acts upon is called the substrate so you have here the enzyme that will act on this substrate so say for example this is maltose so the enzyme name will be maltase because usually the name the in the enzyme is taken from the substrate we just add ase at the end so maltose is a substrate maltase is the enzyme okay now the substrate will sit upon a specified region in the enzyme that that catalytic re reaction then of course in a specific part of the enzyme called the active site so they during the reaction the substrate fits into the enzyme and will transform so after catalysis the the substrate is converted into new products so say for example if this is maltose then it will become glucose and glucose okay so to summarize you now our discussion okay for this lesson you have to answer these questions what are biomolecules what are the four major classes of biological macromolecules and what are their functions how will you differentiate these biological macromolecules in terms of their building blocks and chemical bonds okay. so you should be able to answer those questions in order for you to assess yourself if you really have something learned about this lesson so before i end my presentation i want to thank uh, mr sir, sir Ern balundo for making for helping me uh, make this powerpoint presentation for this lesson if you have question you can ask your a lecture instructor you can contact me through my email or you can key in your questions in our facebook messenger group chat thank you very much and see you again in our next lesson